and I just, I, I'm so appreciative and surprised that there are so many of you here given the amazing um, offerings there are today for this, um, and I'm very grateful. Right? Of course. <laughs> so, um, my name is Lisa Gibbs. And my name is Minda Gibbs. And um, I am a school counselor in Wilmington um, Public Schools um, at, a, at an elementary school, grades one through three. And um, my husband, Rob, is a special ed teacher at Woburn High School. Um, we have been longtime educators in public schools, and um, I also served for 10 years in Reading um, on the school committee. And I'm very passionate about public education um, and advocating for students and teachers alike um, to make sure that everyone has what they need, not all necessarily the same thing, right, but what they need. Um, first of all, that, that was a really, that's a tough act to follow, let me just say. Um, but a, a lot of what um, we're going to talk about today is um, kind of mirrors a little bit what <coughs> Dina was talking about, so um, I'm hopeful that you guys, this will be um, helpful to you as you move forward in your um, inclusionary practices and just ways, different ways to think about students with disabilities in your classrooms and in your schools. So um, we want to tell our story today. We've, I've presented at a million conferences about different things. I'm also a responsive classroom consulting teacher. I present all the time and I'm really nervous today because this is our story of our family and it's personal. So there might be times when I talk about it, especially seeing a few people in here that I might well up a little bit. Um, please don't hold that against me. Um, but this is, this is very personal to us and we wanna share it with you because we're hoping that you'll be able to leave here today with some practices for you. So this is our family um, right here on the board. Um, Douglas and Alec are Sam's two older brothers. Douglas is a sophomore at Salem State University. He would like to be a PE teacher like his mentor, Mr. H at Coolidge. And Alec is a freshman at UMass Amherst um, in the School of Economics. So, um, and Sam, of course, you are a junior here at RMHS, which of course, to me is just <laughs> gross that she's this old now. Um, but you know, before we get started, um, I just want to let you know, um, Rob and I have always, because we're in public education and we've been teaching for a long time, we have always prided ourselves on having um, a very open and honest and very good relationship with every team at every level. Um, in the school district, and I hope that some of you who we have worked with who are here um, agree with that. Um, but we have never gone into our meetings, certainly with any kind of us versus them mentality. Um, it's always a collaboration. We are equal members of the team. Um, we know Sam, and the teachers that teach her know education. Right, so we're there as parents um, on the team. Um, we defer to the experts on the team using our knowledge as educators as well. So, and we also bring bagels to every meeting. Because, <laughs> oh, yeah. I want to be you know, fun without it. <laughs> and now Sam, because she's 17, has been participating in all of our meetings since she was 14. So Sam, why don't you get us started and talk right. to us. Oh, and The Wizard of Oz is one of our favorite, favorite movies. movies, so we're going to do the yellow brick room. <coughs> so why don't you tell us about this first picture? Okay, so I play in the Special Olympics stadium each year, and I would present RMHS. I am in Drama Club. That's a photo of me in Charlotte's Club last spring. I have run for class office each year, elected by my peers to be a social chair. This is me and my two brothers before my sophomore session. I am also in the Harvest Club at RMHS. I am so very proud I am in this club. This is us at one of our body walks. We 
do eat you and it's so fun. Oh, I am also an Army Best Singer and it that is me at my concert. So Sam is really involved um, in the high school community, which is great. She has been involved in her school communities um, since preschool, but this, she really has a place here at the high school, which is awesome. So these, these are the things that we want you to take away today. We want you to really trust yourselves to think outside the box, do some things that are maybe a little unorthodox to maybe get your students to where they need to be. Um, and we really want you to understand that you all have it within you to be able to teach students of different abilities. Um, you have amazing gifts to give, um, and you need to trust yourselves to be able to do that. And hopefully we're gonna help you with that today. And then you need to learn how to ask parents to trust you when you wanna do that outside of the box, creative thinking, um, and ask them to help you with that. So you'll be able to, to do that. And just the biggest thing around teaching students with disabilities, we think, um, that has worked for us is focusing on the outcomes. Think about the units you want to teach. Think about what it is that you want your student to walk away with. And how are you going to get them to show you what they know. Um, and it's okay to not know how to get there, but you need to remain committed to doing it. So it's always best to start at the beginning. So we're going to start at the beginning of Sam's journey through Reading Public Schools. So why don't you tell us about this picture, Sam? This picture is my first teacher in Reading. She was the best. Yeah, this is Miss Vicki. Um, she was Sam's first teacher, as she said, um, and she probably died a thousand deaths. She knew her picture was up here. <laughs> um, um, Rise Preschool does inclusion seamlessly. It's inclusion at its best in our district. Um, the model has just been there. It's always been there, and it's just what they do. It's amazing. If you start with inclusion at three years old, this is an expectation um, for this acceptance throughout life. It's amazing um, because inclusion mirrors real life, right? So what do you want to say about this picture, Sam? This picture of me and my classmates. Yes, I am. I have a step stool because I am a lot smaller than everybody else. Right, everyone getting what they need, right? Um, you probably might recognize some of the knuckleheads in this picture with Sam. Um, these were all her peers in Miss Vicki's class in preschool, um, but this was our first step in the trust process, right? Um, Miss Vicki laid out very clear expectations um, for behavior of students and parents. And it was very, very um, comforting knowing I was leaving Sam in such capable hands. Um, and the model at RISE built this <coughs> set of expectations for us about what the school district could do. And that staff at RISE met every expectation. This is a photo of my second and third year at here at RISE. It was one, it was the best PK ever. I work there now. Yes, Sam does work at Rise Preschool now, in high school. Um, do you want to talk about what you used to do there? Um, or what you do there now, and then what you started with? I started with doing filing, and just, well. And then you were at music therapy? Yes. Now you are. And now I'm a teacher in a classroom, Miss Cannon. So when Sam was in the preschool, Miss um, <coughs> Joyce was her teacher. Here's a lot of the different um, team members um, that worked with Sam. Um, she had a continuation of really great foundational educational practices. Miss um, Joyce really taught Sam how to love school and be part of a group. That was really important. Um, and we felt so strongly about Sam's successes at RISE 
that we redshirted her and kept her for an extra year at, mm -hmm. um, at preschool, and that was the best decision we ever made. And if I can just say something to all of you, don't ever, ever be afraid to recommend a student repeat a year if that is what you strongly believe is in the student's best interests. Um, as a member of the team, you have a right to be honest about what you wish for your students and indeed the responsibility to voice what it is you believe as a professional is best for them. Um, and then the, the entire team will consider. Um, you sometimes hear parents lamenting over, oh, I wish I had kept my child back, wasn't ready, but you never hear someone say they regret that they did keep them back. This was really helpful for Sam. Um, so this, mm -hmm. what do you want to say, Sam? This photo um, is mainly the mysteries. The vacation sign is something that my family still thinks. Miss Joyce has the most amazing vacation song. Does anyone here know it? No? Should we sing it, Sam? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm on vacation. I'm on vacation. La, 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 la. Vacation. I'm on vacation. La, 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 la. We sing that still every vacation. Every vacation, baby. <laughs> so, Miss Joyce forever lives on. Miss Vicki always said, please, please cover your sneeze. We still say that in our family, too. So little tidbits from all the teachers remain in our family. So this was graduation day. Um, and then it was time to move to kindergarten. Um, inclusion starts in your neighborhood. And we really believed very strongly, based on the research that we had done and other students that we knew from other districts, um, that Sam really belonged at her neighborhood school with her brothers. She needed to be walking to school with her brothers and her neighbors. Um, but we were told to give up on that vision um, because the path for students with Down syndrome at Reading Public Schools at that time was to go to a program that would end um, when they leave RISE. So those two visions obviously clashed. And um, we needed to come to a resolution. So we opted for mediation. Um, and the state determined that Sam should enter Birch Meadow with her brothers um, for her elementary experience. So while we prevailed and we knew it was the right thing, um, it was challenging um, it, and because it was uncharted territory for everybody. Unfortunately, um, you know, in the early 2000s, it was kind of disappointing to us that no one with Down syndrome had been educated in the general education setting um, in a classroom, but we were determined to, to do that um, and be the trailblazer if we had to be. Um, but we didn't know, and the staff didn't know what to expect or how to do this. So we learned together. Um, it was new for all of us, and I'm really glad we persevered because we knew it was right for her, and Sam wouldn't be the young woman that she is today if she hadn't started on that road. Um, it was gonna be really hard work, um, but we don't always subscribe to, well, that's what we've always done, so that's what we're going to do. Um, for us, it's always been about services versus programming, um, whenever possible, which supports the law of least restrictive environment. Um, so if you can always think about the least restrictive way you can support your students, that would be the best, th the best place to start and jump off. So here Sam is with her two brothers on the first day of kindergarten. Um, it was not lost on friends close to us that they all wore their Birch Meadow shirts proudly the first day of school. Um, we really wanted that to happen and we were so pleased that it did. It was a huge victory for us and I believe the school district as well. Um, it, was, it was a great day. It was a great day. What do you want to say about this picture, Sam? Oh, this picture. Here is a picture of Miss Simon, who I now call M.S. When you, when I see her, and the other photo are my two helpers, who they helped me with everything. I'm really grateful for them 
Miss Garen and Miss Mooney. Miss Garen is here today. She was Sam's first para. Um, I'm so glad that you're here. Um, I don't know if you, I don't want to put you on the spot, but if there's anything you feel that you want to chime in about, I'd love to have you oh talk. Gosh, I feel like emotional. <laughs> yeah, so let me, let me just talk, and if you yeah. want to chime in, yeah. So this is Sam's first day of kindergarten with Miss Simon, Miss Garen, now Mrs. Gargano, and Mrs. Mooney. Um, let's be honest. I had an, a conversation today with MS, with Miss Simon, um, about this. And she's like, it was hard. It was hard. I'm like, yes, it was hard. And she said, I was afraid. I was afraid that I wasn't going to be able to educate Sam. And no one was telling me how I needed to do it because no one at my school knew. And we asked for a long time for um, teachers and paras at Wood End to come and speak with Miss Simon to come and talk to her, maybe give her some ideas. Um, and that was kind of, that was also unorthodox. They, it's not that people were unwilling, it's just that they had never done it before. They didn't know what to do. Um, but when Miss Simon talked to me today, I said, I want you to give me an honest answer. Did having Sam in your class help you grow as a professional? She said it helped her grow as a person. Mm -hmm. So I think it really stretched everybody. I'm sorry, I hate that ugly cry. Um, <laughs> really stretched everybody, and it really taught Miss Simon that she she didn't have to look at the diagnosis, right? But that's all she saw in the beginning because she was responsible for educating Sam, and there was no one really to tell her how she was going to do that and how she was going to support her. And Sam's just a little girl, and Down syndrome is one of the many things about her. It doesn't define her, but unfortunately in that moment, that's all that Maria saw because that's, that's what she was faced with, and she didn't have the support that she needed to do it. Um, so Sam sensed that she felt that her teachers didn't feel like she belonged a little bit because their colleagues had recommended, their colleagues that they respect and they trust had recommended for her to go into a different program. So the state can make all the determinations that they want, but there needs to be other things happening going on to support the teachers who are going to include their kids in their classrooms in the general ed setting. Um, so after many meetings and discussions, um, Sam settled in and she had a great experience with MS and she flourished under the tutelage of Miss Simon, of course. Um, and she remains to this day one of Sam's favorite people, right, Sam? Of course. You would so. love me. <laughs> <laughs> no, Miss Simon remains one of your favorite people. Yes. <laughs> Do you want to say anything? Or I mean, I was lucky enough, I, I was with Sammy, so it was my first year out of college. Um, and I was with Samantha from kindergarten and first grade, so I got to be with her for two years, and I feel like she made me the teacher I am. first grade um, I cannot believe I do not have a picture of Patty Beckman with Sam um, in, on the first day of first grade Patty was all, all my kids had Patty Beckman um, and she was just an amazing teacher Sam continued to thrive with her um, she was nurturing and experienced um, and she was a permanent Sam was a permanent fixture of the student body at Birch Meadow which is really what we were after um, communication between home and school was constant, it was consistent, um, as well as communication between Sam's former teacher, Ms. Simon, and Ms. Beckman to um, help support and develop this model at Birch Meadow. Birch Meadow. Um, and critical to this success was the support of the special educator, the OT, the PT, and the speech pathologist. Again, services versus programming, right? So. What do you want to say about this next picture, Sam? Miss Ms. Murray taught us that mistakes are good, 
They help us grow. They teach us things us need. Teach us things we need to know. And that's one of the golden rules for me and my whole family still says it because my brothers had Miss Mary too. Yeah. So Mrs. Murray, um, she was great. All my kids had Mrs. Murray. It's funny, they all just had the same teachers all the way through. Um, and so like Sam's teachers before her, um, Mrs. Murray um, had a solid grasp of the curriculum and the outcomes and the expectations that she wanted for Sam. Um, and at conference time, I'll never forget this, um, Mrs. Murray was reticent to give Sam, to give us Sam's report card. Um, she knew how hard Sam was working, um, but her hard work was not reflected on the report card because she was being compared to her peers, um, because she was held to the same standards as her peers were. So this frustrated Mrs. Murray um, because she had determined outcomes for Sam and ways that Sam could show her knowledge. Um, but she was unable to articulate this on the current report card form. Um, so this inspired much conversation, um, and it was further determined that Sam's report card would be, from then on, be adapted to reflect Sam's output and successes. And these successes continued in third grade with Mrs. Lambert. And what do you want to say about this next picture? These are my fourth grade teachers I had an iPad, which I used for work in school to help me learn and show that I knew. So it's hard for me to look at this picture and not cry, mm -hmm. right? Um, this was the dream team in fourth grade, honestly. Um, this was the perfect recipe for inclusion for Sam then. This is Tewksbury classroom teacher, Mrs. Serino, special educator, and Mrs. Tourette, Para, who is here. Where is she? Oh, there she is. Um, so Jolene determined the outcomes, and everyone worked hard in order for Sam to show what she had learned. Um, Sam was using apps on the iPad to work along with her peers, using word banks um, to show parts of a craft. Do you remember that, Judy, when she did the craft? Um, taking surveys and making graphs and math and making presentation to her classmates about her findings. Um, these three were so creative in their teaching of Sam um, <coughs> alongside of her peers. They were never inside the box. They were always out. So, what do you want to say about this, Sam? Okay, so these are my friends. Allie and Ryan Rose are my friends who helped me learn about how to talk to other people <coughs> and to help me figure stuff out, like when I need to wipe my face mm -hmm. or thumbs up or thumbs down, like some behaviors. Right, so they would give Sam a nonverbal signal <coughs> if she was on task or like, yeah, don't do that. So. Okay, like, oh, okay. <laughs> Check yourself, right? Yeah. So. Here we are, we're moving on to older elementary years and middle school years where an increasing focus on social skills was happening. Um, Mrs. Vance and Mrs. Pink at Coolidge um, were instrumental in making Sam's middle school experience such a positive one for her. Um, I'm so embarrassed I have no photos of them either. It's not really all that common for moms to be snapping photos in the school, <laughs> however, so um, the opportunities are definitely less at the middle school level, but Sam went to school early each day, and she had the job title of assistant to the assistant principal, <laughs> doing jobs and truly beginning to understand responsibility and her emerging vocational skills. Filling the candy jars, watering plants, mm -hmm. filing things, um, and these were all ways that helped make Sam part of the tapestry of Coolidge Middle School and really feel like she belonged there. Um, so Mrs. Vance identified two girls um, who were interested in making friends with Sam and learning how to support her socially and have honest conversation about her behavior and give her suggestions about maybe things that she could consider changing to make people be comfortable around her. Um, this friendship is really so special and these girls remain friends of Sam's to this day. Mm -hmm. 
So this, um, Mr. H and Ms. Michelle helped me be who I want to be in middle school. They got me. <laughs> they did. So here we are at the Coolidge Move Up Ceremony. Um, at the end of eighth grade, we had a big transition meeting, because um, that's a huge transition. Not just the transition of kindergarten, but it's another really big transition um, to go to the high school. We had a big transition meeting with the team um, at Coolidge and also with the incoming team at the high school. Um, we did a, a kind of abbreviated person-centered planning meeting, um, and so many attended. Um, including Sam's brothers, who were really an important and integral part of her transition to the high school. They were already there. Um, so Sam made a PowerPoint um, that day and presented it that day to everyone at the meeting. And I have a copy of it. I'd love to just go over it Let's quickly go with you. Over it. Okay. So this was Sam's PowerPoint that she made in eighth grade. So she wanted everybody to know who she was. Um, things that she's good at, her favorite parts of school, things that were kind of giving her a little anxiety about the transition she wanted her teachers to know about so they could help support her. Um, and she presented this whole thing to everybody at this meeting, it was great. Things she wanted her teachers to know what she was interested in learning about at the high school. Um, and she wanted them to know what she wants to learn from her friends, <coughs> right? Yeah. And then she really wanted her teachers to understand her and how she learns best, right? So this was, Miss Allen is here. Hi, Miss Allen. Right there. <laughs> so um, Miss Allen is still a big part of Sam's high school life, too. She so, is. Um, and Sam had, she, when she was in eighth grade, she did have goals for post-secondary, and it's pretty cool that her goals are pretty much the same now for post-secondary as they were in eighth grade. And then she wanted to make sure she thanked everyone for coming. And it was very good to have Sam make this presentation to everybody that day. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So. So what do you want to say about this next picture, Sam? Oh, so this picture, I love this picture. It's one of my favorites. This is, this is me and Mix Choir at RMA Chess. This is at my, con my concert. And my gown is something I love to wear because it is really flattering on. <laughs> Being a part of mixed choir helped me understand, like, to read music and make my teacher, Miss K. She really helps me, helped me sing, helped me fit in, and helps me with my music work, of course. So Sam's transition to high school was a big hurdle, wasn't it? It was a big hurdle. Um, there were bumps on the way in the beginning and some naughty business um, because Sam had more freedom at high school than she had ever had before. Um, so she showed us what she needed um, and we responded and um, we tried to proactively figure out what um, she needed. But everyone at the high school was just so responsive. Um, and really supportive through this transition. Um, so one teacher in particular, Mr. Albright, um, Sam's biology teacher in ninth grade, he reached out to me after he started his unit on cells and chromosomes. Um, he started teaching the unit off by saying, everyone has 23 sets of chromosomes and a pair in each one. And Sam raised her hand and said, no they don't, I don't. Um, so he kind of stopped in his tracks, backtracked a little, and tried to, you know, teach the unit um, in a different way, went on to another topic. But he was so honest with me, um, and I really appreciated that. He told me he didn't know enough about Down syndrome to teach it, and would I be willing to come in and teach bio with him one day um, to teach about it. I 
are you kidding me? <laughs> I you was it. not a, I didn't hate it. I did not like science as a, as a young girl, let me just tell you. But um, I loved that he was willing to do this and have me in the class to help him show the students that it was important to honor Sam's differences and it was important for them to learn about them. Um, so as a result, Sam really loved science and she was within four points of passing the bio MCAS. So because of his commitment to her, it just really, yeah. So like Sam pointed out earlier, she's in chorus and singers. And if there's any gen ed teacher at the high school level that can teach any high school teacher about inclusion um, and how to make it work, it's Miss K. Um, Ms. Kay talks about outcomes and works with Sam's special ed teachers about how they can work together to see that Sam achieves them. Um, Ms. Kay is supportive and nurturing and has really taken the time to get to know Sam. And this is easier for her to do because she has Sam every year, right? Um, so in order for Sam to be successful in high school, our team determined that she needs support when she is part of the drama productions. Thank you, Ms. Allen, for being that support. Um, there were times when Sam wasn't where she needed to be or not on task, not socially appropriate, that kind of stuff, and this has been addressed by this additional support. And we're grateful that Sam is able to get, have this opportunity, like any other student at RMHS, with the appropriate supports that she needs for success and socialization. I have been doing a coffee cart. It's super fun. It helps me understand that people go crazy, really crazy, without their coffee. <laughs> I am also. I also learned to go out in my community high school and get better at my many skills and serving people here I am at the ATM at RMHS learning how <coughs> to manage my m money and taking care of it after I graduate I want to go to college go to Salem State University where my brother goes right now <laughs> I would <coughs> like to live on my own I would like to get a job at Sephora because I love makeup <laughs> there I always wear makeup my my experience at all of these all of these schools has been amazing. I can't take it, I can't take things for granted. And it's okay to make mistakes, it really is. It makes me feel so good that I am in all of these groups and I am so very grateful for all my teachers and my family and everything they have done for me to help me become a successful at school to prepare for college and everyone else. So as Sam prepares for her post-secondary experience <coughs> at Salem State, there's lots that need to, needs to happen. Um, and it's not the typical high school experience for um, students. Um, so a lot of creativity and out of the box thinking <coughs> happens at the high school level, right, Ms. Crowley? So um, goals need to be achieved. And so the coffee delivery, working in the cafeteria, working at Rise Preschool, making copies and filing, these are all the ways to help Sam feel part of the school and at the same time prepare her for her post-secondary placement. So we are pleased that we saw this trail. Um, we didn't know what we were going to find at the end of it, um, but we couldn't be happier with the outcome. Um, 
And our message today is like, if you advocate to have a student with significant needs in your classroom, you will experience nothing like you have ever done before. Um, as a member of the team, your opinion and expertise is critical to the success and the outcomes of those students in your classroom. Always focus on the outcomes. Always be honest. You don't know what you don't know. And you don't know how many gifts you have inside of you until you stretch yourself to do that. It's OK to say you don't know, but you have to remain committed to figuring it out. Um, come prepared to meeting to talk about challenges, but also come with a plan to make things better. And if it doesn't work, reconvene the team and say, you know what, we tried this, it didn't work, I'd like to try something else. This is the way you build trust with families. This is how that helps, willingness to try something new and admitting when maybe it didn't work the way you wanted it to and you want to tweak it a little bit. But don't be afraid to try something new. This is the way, this is the way to do that. So this is our message to all of you today. You have it all within you. You just have to learn it for yourself. So um, if you have any questions right now, we do have um, probably about <coughs> 10 minutes for questions. Um, any questions about our journey, specific things that we did, specific challenges that we had, successes that we had, um, we'd love to entertain any questions that you have right now. I have a question. Yeah, sure. When oh, did you do the, start the coffee business, and how do you like that? I love it. Um, well, my teacher, Miss Farley, and Miss Crowley really helped me understand money, like how to count back. It, it helps me figure out, like, when I do go to college, it will help me, like, what you guys do. Like, you have an ATM card. <laughs> like, it will help me understand to help. Be independent, right? Yeah, to be independent. Being independent for me, like, will help me understand that, like, this is the way I want to be. This is I want to do. Awesome. Does anyone have any other questions? I have a question. Sure. Um, <coughs> did the journey that you and Sam, well, the journey you're still on, yeah. open doors to inclusive classrooms for others in writing? Or, or, yes, okay, it did. Good. And so we're really pleased that um, we made this choice, this commitment. Um, there are other students with Sam's diagnosis who have come up behind her, um, certainly in her neighborhood school and other schools, um, and teachers have been um, more comfortable and more willing to take that on. Um, you know, it's interesting that you asked that question. I, working in education and also um, really knowing a lot about education policy, things move at a snail's pace in education, don't they? And the whole world is so frenetically moving and things move on at such a snail's pace. Um, the thing that I like about Sam's team is that they're very forward thinking here at the high school about trying to prepare for the students who are up and coming um, behind her and how they're gonna support them. But, and this is something that I say to her team all the time, Sam is the student in front of you now. How are you going to support Sam now to reach her goals? And have that help the students that come, certainly, but let's remain focused. She's in her junior year. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're at the end of junior year. So that's that's mm -hmm. something that you know we always we always say to them. But we're well, very pleased. I think to we them applaud them. you for oh. yeah. doing that. of all the support um, from everyone in Reading Public Schools. Um, you know, being on the school committee for me was a really, really um, rewarding and gratifying um, and humbling service <coughs> to this town. Um, but it hurt my kids a little bit because I think that when we had team meetings, um, I think people thought that I had 
Pat Scatini or John Doherty on a speed dial the minute I left the meeting telling them all about it. And I will promise you that that has never once happened. I kept it very separate um, and still do to this day. I'm still friendly with John and um, talk to him a great deal about education policy and things that are happening, but have always kept that separate. And as much as you need to ask parents to trust you, they need to show you that they can be trusted as well. And I think we did a pretty good job doing that. Um, so, any other questions? Yeah. What do you want to major at at Salem State? I want to major in cosmetics. Oh, okay. You said that, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we have we we're not really sure about what that's going to look like, but we have an open house to go to on Monday um, yes. to learn all about what Sam's experience at Salem State will be. Well, that would be great to be part of. Um, I saw you in some plays. You had a drama. Yeah. 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 Sam's very dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, like Chris Kelly said, she'd really appreciate everyone filling out the um, filling out the um, feedback forms. Um, and if you could all make sure that you sign the attendance sheet that's going around with a pen, that would be great. Um, I will pass these around. Thank you, and thank you all again. Are coming to hear our story. And thank you for coming.